Shut up and sit down. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Third Shift. This is episode 222. I, of course, am your host, the greatest man who's ever lived, your funky leader. It's me, it's Matt. And with me, as always, look at me, shaking his head as he's so blown out of the water by my awesome intro. I'm so hyped up. I'm so full of energy. It's, it's ridiculous. We got the Beast Master of the Third Shift. It's my buddy, Eric. Eric, how you been doing this week? ho I've eaten turkey, boys and girls. I've eaten it all, okay? It was Turkey Day this last week. Of course, if you listened to our last episode, you know. You know. We said, hey, this is like a weird early time. We're about to go on turkey vacation, everybody. Well, we did it. You did it. I did it. I went to the freaking families. Drew down, you know, and I spread COVID across the land. I plagued us all. I did it. I did what I said I was going to do. Went down there, and it was freaking awesome. It was fantastic. Let me tell you, all right? mini story. I'll try to make it brief because there are a lot of video games I play too, but I gotta tell you, I gotta tell you, my brother-in-law, he loves smoking. All right. He's got this huge, beautifully custom built smoker. It's freaking amazing. It's fantastic. He has smoked us many a meals. No, wait. (laughs) When you said he loves smoking, I was like, (laughs) when does Chad smoke? Maybe he got into cigars or something? (laughs) Like big cigar man? Oh, oh, smoking meat. I could could see where you were going with that. My other brother loves smoking too, (laughs) but not that type of smoking. Well, that's true, yeah. yeah. So anyways, we're not talking about that. We're talking about smoking meats. So he woke up Turkey Day, all right? And now let me preface this by saying the day before Turkey Day, I took my turkey. All right, I basted that turkey up in this Caribbean jerk. I, I smothered it and lathered it and jathered it and slithered into it. Blah, 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 blah. I did all those things. That turkey was just rubbed by me for many, many, many minutes. Then I stuck that turkey back in the refrigerator. All right, it was about 20, 30 minutes all in all. I went back to doing whatever I was doing. Now, my brother-in-law, he woke up at the wee hours of 4.35 a.m., and I hear the pitter patter because I'm down in the basement sleeping. All right, I hear, and he's up there just getting around. He's doing all sorts of things. He's he's putting together these these butter bombs that Chef Gordon Ramsay told him to put together. He's did all this stuff. You know, he's going crazy. He's going ham town. All right, he gets that he gets that smoker smoking. He gets the wood rolling. He gets everything going. He gets that turkey out in there. I come up about an hour later. It's still, mind you, about six thirty a.m. at this point. Six fifteen, six thirty. I decide I'll keep him company. I go out. He's, you know, it's pitch black. Deer are out in the wilderness. You know, everything's flopping around. Me and him are just sitting in silence. He's smoking a cigarette. I'm just sitting there doing nothing. We're watching that smoke, smoke. We're talking about life. I go get us a coffee. I go get us a hot cocoa. And we sit and we do this. Not bad, right? Not bad. So that goes by. Eventually everybody wakes up. Life presumes life goes on as normal. Skip forward, all right? The whole day goes by. He's still smoking. He's still doing that thing. Because if you don't know, smoking a turkey takes like 14 hours. It's it's ridiculous. It's stupid. I, with my turkey, I'm a deep frying kind of guy. So, 52 minutes before it's turkey time, before all the other <laughs> things are done. Mind you, I'm busy as a, I'm busy as a goose this whole time. I, got, I, I cooked a ham. I did all sorts of stuff. All right? So don't don't act like I'm not busy. But anyways, 52 minutes beforehand, I pop that oil into that pan. I turn that sucker on. That oil starts flying up to 400, I mean, not 400, 325 degrees. I take that turkey. I put on this little thingy bajiggy little guillotine thing, and I lower it down in there, sizzling, popping, doing its magic. Gets down in there, starts going. I just keep that timer going. I keep watching, making sure that oil stays at about 325 steady. 42 minutes later, I pull that bad boy out. Mind you, his turkey still isn't done. My turkey's now done. I set it on the counter. I take it off its little thing. I let it sit for 15 to 25 minutes so them juices can go ahead and get right back up into it and become delicious. His turkey is just now getting done. He pulls it out. It smells wonderful. Mine smells wonderful. He comes in. We start cutting the turkeys up. He does a much better job at cutting than I do. I can't cut. I'm a, I'm a crazy person. I don't know what I'm doing. But I, I do my best. I cut it up. He cuts his up. He starts to find out that his white meat cooked really good. 
but that dark meat didn't cook so good. So he has to, he cuts the white meat off. He puts the dark meat back in the oven to do a quick heat on it. My turkey's done all the way through. We're cutting it up. We eat it. Everybody loves both them turkeys. I'm telling you, God, whoo, whoo, boys and girls, them turkeys were freaking amazing. All right. But at the end of the day, here's the whole point of this. Everybody goes, man, those turkeys were great. You both did a wonderful job. We love those turkeys. But I think that fried turkey's where it's at. Fried turkey's where it's at. Everybody goes, fried turkey's where it's at. So his face, he goes down. He's in Sadville because he spent 14 hours watching this turkey, taking care of this turkey, making sure this turkey came out fantastic. And it did. It really did. But now, if, how well, often did he actually have to go check on the turkey? Or was it just like, oh, yeah, it looks all right. Cl- okay, click, click. well, well, all right. It, here it is. Here's the truth of it. In the beginning, the whole about hour and a half of the first portion of it, you got to watch the whole thing. And then he went to sleep for about four hours. And then he came back out, stoked it, did all the stuff. Then he went back in for another five, six hours, came back out, checked it one another time, and that was about it. So, okay. so yes, it's not as much work as you'd imagine, but it's still something you got to think. It's in the back of your head. You got to pay attention to it at least a little bit throughout the whole day. Yeah. Whereas mine was just stick down an old deep fryer, boom, 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 boom. It's done. Eat it up. And uh, so I won. There you go, folks. <laughs> there you go. Let me tell you. You want to smoke a turkey, that's great. It's delicious. Brine it all night, smoke it all day, do what you got to do. It's a fantastic turkey, no doubt. But just deep frying a turkey, best way to go. So freaking fantastic. It was delicious. It was scrumptious, everything we made. Great turkey time. I know that was way out of the allotted time for our uh, weekly. And I didn't even talk to you about <laughs> video games. <laughs> I'm going to ruin all your days and nights. But I'll, I'll make the rest brief since I, I went on so long with this story. Turkey Day was great. I hope everybody had a fantastic time out there. And if you don't celebrate it, that's okay, too. I just hope you had a great weekend, extended weekend at that, because even if you don't celebrate it, you got the time off because you're in the United States of America. And if you're listening to us from some other country, maybe you didn't. That's cool, too. Anywho's, real quick, I played World of Warcraft. Shadowlands is out. It's it's freaking rocking and rolling, man. And I'm going to tell you right now, I, got, I was in there. I was playing. And at first it was kind of, I was kind of hitting that feeling like I, I have been where I'm like, I, I love, I love WoW still, but I'm not into it. You know what I mean? I'm just kind of, ah, I don't know. I just play because I feel like I need to play because I've played this game for 16 years. But no, it clicked. I finally got like a good three hour stretch where I was playing and just going. Nothing else was distracting me. There's nothing else I was supposed to do. And all of a sudden there I was. Oh, just enjoying the hell out of it. Getting back into the story. I'm over here. Click, 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 click. My buttons are flying. I'm doing all sorts of cool skills. I'm smoking baddies. I went, oh, yeah. I used to be a really good World of Warcraft player. Now I remember how I'm supposed to do all these things. And I got all my add-ons up and I'm doing the things. Having a really great time. The game is beautiful. I've got an, uh, I just bought an SSD. So I can't wait to install this bad boy to make it even faster, more streamlined. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm so excited. I can't wait. I only didn't do it today because we're doing the show. And I was terrified that if I installed it, something would go wrong. All of a sudden, I'm going, oh, man, I can't do the show. I screwed my computer up. Brr. <laughs> so it's sitting here, and I'm looking at it. And I'm really sad because I was hoping later on to play it. But alas, doesn't matter. Anywho's beyond that, Destiny 2, uh, whatever that's called, the new expansion, Beyond Light. I always forget what it's called. I don't know. I was going to get really mad at you if you couldn't remember, but I knew it, and I don't even play that damn game. Yeah, you know what? I got it. Okay, I got it. <laughs> beyond Light, I'm having a good time with. Uh, I've been playing with family and friends. We've been in there. I've been getting my uh, light level up, doing what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm only really sad because we don't have six people to do the raid, and I hear the raid is super accessible and super fun. And I want to get in there, but we've got like four of us that actually even play anymore. From what I hear, though, there's people like single, single man in this thing. So I'm like, well, maybe if we actually get a little overgeared and practice, we can just four man it instead of trying to find two randos to go with. Because everybody knows how it goes. Randos, you never know what you're going to get. Could be great. Could be really bad. I don't want to deal with it. 
So been doing that, having a good time, playing Doom Eternal. I got in there while I was on vacation. I was like, you know what? I need to get back on this. I need to get through the next couple levels. That way I can stream the next couple levels because I've been totally off the streaming line. I failed my year. It's fantastic. I can't wait to talk about it in our New Year's special. But alas, I was like, you know what? We got to get back into that. We got to do it. So I attempted the next level. I was getting, oh, I was getting smoked so bad. <laughs> this is not a game you can just walk away from and come back to, especially in the late game, and think you're going to do well at. So I got smoked, and I was like, okay, I need to go back to the old levels that I can do by heart, get a whole bunch of free one-ups, then do the new levels with like seven, eight free guys, so that way I can just like trash can my level through it, and yeah. then learn where everything is, do what I got to do. So played that, did all that, had a good time with it. Played some Godfall, learned a little bit about that, but I'll talk about it later. And lastly, Astro's Playroom, finished that up. I heard it's a really easy platinum. I still don't know if I really want to go for it, though, because it just involves, like, another two hours of me, like, just, you know, grinding through some stuff. And it was fun. It was great. A lot of people talked really glowingly about it. I thought it was fun, too. Don't get me wrong, but I don't know. I don't see it. I don't, I don't really see where it's worth my time to do it. So I'm I'm kind of torn on the easy platinum side of it or just not wasting the two hours that'll take me to get it and just go play something I should be playing instead. So that's been my week, everybody. I know it went long, but it was so much fun and so great. What about you, Matt? Well, I've had a fantastic week as well. I don't have as many stories to tell on the turkey day front. Went to mom's house, had a turkey, had the best stuffing, her like cornbread and sausage stuffing that she does every year, mm. her broccoli casserole she makes every year, and of course traditional green bean casserole, then a beautiful coconut cream pie. Oh my God, all for myself, you know, eating that all, all over the week. And of course, as always, as every single year here on Third Shift, I got like two turkey legs and two turkey wings still in the fridge. I'm working my way through them. I'm going to be eating turkey salad all next, all next week, making Eric shake his head and be like, you're going to die of salmonella. Mm-hmm. Well, turkey, have it these last death. five years, sucker. That, Nothing that can kill you. me. I can't wait. Which days you're going to die. And I can't wait to be on the show by myself for one last time when you're dead because of that turkey. <laughs> That's never gonna happen. Never. I'm turkey immune. I'm I'm the turkey. If, you 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 kill everything in the turkey. You roasted it for nine hundred hours in the oven. What could possibly survive that ever? Nothing. That's it's dead. It's hundred percent sanitary. It's sterile. It's dead. perfect. It's delicious. <laughs> Science, folks. Still eating a few leftovers. Just I I love. Not only Thanksgiving, but every single day after Thanksgiving. Because you can have Thanksgiving over and over and over and over and over again. It's my favorite time of year. It's beautiful. And then when you're like, oh, man, I'm sick of leftovers. Oh, well, I'm just going to go cook all the food that I normally cook. Oh, okay. And then, hmm, what do I feel like today? Thanksgiving again. <laughs> beautiful stuff. Love it. On top of that, every single year after Thanksgiving, my favorite local theater, the Williamson Theater, does a Giving Tuesday like play reading. Like they usually do like all day long. We go go to the theater in person for free, sit down and watch people read through, you know, professional actors reading through and acting out six plays in a row. Obviously you can't go anywhere inside anymore. So they did it on Zoom. They did three of them throughout the day. I think it was eleven o'clock, three o'clock, and then seven o'clock PM. Three awesome shows, amazing actors all the way through. Just a fantastic performance. There were a couple of hitches, you know, when somebody had really bad internet and it was kind of like their line kind of stuttered in and out, like, you know, how it is on Discord with you and me. But other than that, just a fantastic time, fantastic shows. I love that place. So I'm glad that they were able to do something to kind of keep the tradition alive. And then on the video game front, look at this list, Eric. I have a list of 12, <laughs> all I 12 see is, video all I games see is that many, I played. Many, 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 many. I, d- I didn't know what kind of game that was, or if it was for the Switch or PC or something. I was like, wow, what's this game? Many, 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 many. Over the last like week and a half, I've played 12 separate games. So obviously, I'm not going to talk about every single one of them. I'll probably talk about the ones I have the least to talk about, and then save the other ones for what you play in Third Shift. But Animal Crossing, always playing that. Played a little bit more Persona 4 Golden. Streamed a little bit more Yakuza Like a Dragon. Got into Hot Shot Racing, which is the game that I won off of the I Dream of Indie channel. That's kind of fun, like a little Daytona USA throwback Dreamcast racer type game. That's a lot of fun. And then I signed up for Game Pass Ultimate. So that just unlocked a whole treasure trove of all these other games. All the games that have been on my list that I've been forgetting about, they were right there. They showered in my face. And I went, oh my God, that's amazing. 
played some Gears 5, realized I'm not really into Gears anymore. Like, it was fun back when we played back in the mm-hmm. day. Back in the day, yeah. Yeah, and now I'm just like, eh, this is cool, but I don't know, just carving people up into bits really isn't it for me in like a gear scenario right now. Mm-hmm. Downloaded Battle Chasers Night War, which... That is a good game. Mm-hmm. And it's a good game, but it just didn't hook me. I played a couple hours of it, and I was like, all right, maybe someday, but not right now. Got into River City Girls. That game is freaking amazing. You it's don't, phenomenal. No, that's BS. We said we were going to play that together. You know what? You said you got to buy me a copy so we can play together. <laughs> well, see if Game Pass Ultimate will cross play it on your PC and my Xbox. Cause that's actually, play- that's not a bad idea. That's not a bad mm-hmm. idea. If it does, because I want to get Games Pass anyway. Mm-hmm. And if it does, get Games Pass, me, you can actually play. Because mm-hmm. over like two days, I busted all the way through that game with with one of the characters. So I can start over with Kunio, which I unlocked. But that game is fantastic. I love the characters, love the story, the dialogue, the music. It, everything was great, except it was sometimes a little like stiff, like the controls were a little bit stiff. But I feel like with two players, it would be just, oh, just a chef's kiss, a dream of a game. So I loved my time with that. Looking forward to playing it again with you next time we do it, if we can manage to do it. On top of that, also played Star Renegades, which I'll talk about later in the episode. Tease, tease, wink, wink. And then, well, it happened. My buddy Eric, he got me a PS5. So I've been playing all the PS5 games. I've been playing Astro's Playroom, which I thought I thought was phenomenal. It was the first thing I played while I was downloading everything else. And it reminded me so much of Super Mario Odyssey and Animal Crossing. Because Odyssey, you're running around, everything's wild and crazy. You're transforming into the different things and doing the stuff. I haven't beat it or done everything in it yet. And then Animal Crossing, because everywhere you go, it's happy. There's fun music. There's singing things. There's Everything's happy to see you. There's little, cute little scenarios you can find all the way around the corners. I was loving it. I don't know if I'll go and platinum it, like you said, but that was great. Playing Spider-Man, Miles Morales, swinging around through the city. That's amazing. And then Godfall. We'll talk about that more later in the episode. So a million games I've been playing. I guess I mentioned pretty much everything on the list other than two things, which I will definitely save for what you play in Third Shift. But it's been a great week. Look at that. Look at all those games. I loved every single game that I played, or they were at least all fantastic games. Even if they didn't hook me, it was great. It was a great week, and that's phew, that was my week. What about you, Eric? I'll I know you, you got what? some other great Woo. games that released this week. I know. Speaking of great weeks, great times. We got an amazing title, Immortals Phoenix Rising, coming at you December 3rd, released by Ubisoft Quebec, and Matt's laughing. He's going, what's Eric talking about? This isn't on the show notes. You have two games. I was going to yell at you about it. Now you got and a whole I, different game. I what changed the hell's it up. going on? You know what? I said to myself, I said, self, Matt's going to try to give me crap. And I ain't going to allow that. I ain't going to allow it. Uh-huh. Because these games I was going to talk about were freaking fantastic and amazing. Mm. But you know what? Mm-mm. I'm not going to hear it today. I'm not going to hear it. I'm not going to hear it. It's not going to happen. So I said, Immortals Phoenix Rising. I've been watching this one for a while. I've been interested in it, wanting to get all my hands on it, but not sold on it. All right? Because Ubisoft typically not the, you know, I don't typically play Ubisoft games. They're not my jam. Zelda Breath of the Wild's not really my jam either. So I'm like, well, okay. And, and for those of you who don't know, here we go. Let's get in the, the, the mix of it. All right? Immortals Phoenix Rising, released on everything. It's on Switch, PC, Xbox, PlayStation 4, 5, 1, blah, 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 Stadia. It's everywhere, okay? Of course, it's a Ubisoft game. They put yes. it literally on like the Nokia N-Gage yeah, if they toaster, still could. Yeah, toaster, doesn't matter. Anywhere they can <laughs> get it, they will put it, and they did. So this game has a huge inspiration from Zelda Breath of the Wild, which is why I just mentioned it. It's a third-person adventure game. You take the role of the hero, the hero, heroine. You get to go to Aphrodite's little beauty parlor and you can just customize your character, make them look how you want them to look, etc. And then you go out and it's got Zeus, you know, the Greek mythology, all that going on. Zeus and all of his folks, all right, the big baddies come out. He's done in prison and screwed over all the gods except for a couple of them, Zeus, one of them. And you have to go find what makes them them. And retrieve them and find them and get them all back to the gods so that the way they can become themselves again. Because the big baddie stripped them of all that makes them them. The gods took all their special, you know, traits away. 
you're going to find him again. Meanwhile, Zeus is here. He he thinks humans, mortals are useless. And there's all this banter back and forth throughout the game. It's like, and here's where it gets weird because the game has like completely like weird reviews. Like some people say it's seven, it's bearable, it's doable, it's a good game. Seven's a good game, but nothing special. The things it takes from a Zelda Breath of the Wild, it doesn't quite do as good as Zelda Breath of the Wild, this and that. The humor for some says they don't think it was good humor. Others say it was great humor. And it bugs me on some levels because this game does take a lot of inspiration from Zelda Breath of the Wild. You got your stamina gauge, you're early on given a whole bunch of different abilities that you can, like, uh, obviously, uh, with Hercules strength, you can lift up the rocks, do all the things to solve puzzles, throw rocks, put them on plates, this and that. It works a lot like the gravity thing from Zelda Breath of the Wild. So you can see where the inspiration comes from. You can see where the open-worldness comes from. Because in this, you are in this huge environment with all these skill sets given to you early on that you then got to use to solve the puzzles throughout the open world, throughout the different dungeons, which are called vaults in this, which, by the way, the vaults are really awesome. And I'll talk about them in just a minute. But I just wanted to finish the line where you go about following what Zeus and them tell you to do, and you discover these open, you know, these these different areas. And then just like old school, like Assassin's Creed, you got to go to like the high point. And then it unlocks that area, and then it, you can start, uh, while you're at the high point or wherever you want to be, you can see, like, different spots that are, like, something you want to check out, and you can start marking them as, like, uh, treasures, dungeons, vaults, whatever, and then you go about getting to them. And then you'll get, like, uh, your wings, which allows you to fly, glide. You can climb, like I already mentioned, with your stamina, lift things, move things, all that good stuff. So you'll go about the world traversing it and getting to those points and finding those treasures, finding those secrets. Now, what's different from Breath of the Wild, which I really appreciate, is first off, your weapons stick with you. It's not all this breaking crap and all that, which annoyed the hell out of me, which I didn't play and or finish Breath of the Wild. And secondly, Breath of the Wild really didn't have any dungeons per se. It just had the shrines, but they weren't really dungeons. They were just kind of like little mini puzzles and you figured them out. And this, you go to vaults, and they're like these really cool, actual, like, kind of dungeon dungeons. And then there's a bunch of puzzles inside that you got to solve and figure out and get through to get your uh, your, your items, etc., to keep moving on. So, this game, I think, in my own opinion, is a really nice mix between Zelda Breath of the Wild and, you know, your Assassin's Creed typical kind of playthrough and your old school Zelda games. It's colorful, it's fun, it's not it doesn't take itself real serious. Like I said, Zeus and them are constantly bantering and the uh the narrator is always going to you know, talking and breaking the fourth wall, doing that kind of thing. It's a it looks good. It's a lot of fun from what I see. I'm 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 very interested. I was like I said, mildly interested and cautious about it, but after watching it being played, I'm like, well, this isn't like just like Breath of the Wild because this actually gives you stuff that you keep. This actually goes into dungeons. This actually gives you places that you want to go to, you know, points of interest, things you need to go do and take care of. You're kind of guided along the way instead of it's just, hey, here's the open world. I don't know. Do what you want. Goodbye. You know, I don't like that. If you like that, then, hey, good for you. But for me, I like being guided and kind of told where I should be going, what I should be doing, being given kind of open clues and hints as to where points of interest, cool stuff is. This game does that. And, like I said, it's fun, it's colorful, and if you like goofy humor, you might really enjoy it. I like goofy humor, but some people don't, and so, I don't know, I don't understand it, but if you don't, that's cool. Uh, Whatever. I'm just saying. I do, and I think this game looks like something y'all should be playing. So I'll let that be as it is. Go check it out. It's on everything you can get it. It's all out there. I want to mention Dragon Age one more time. to say Dragon Age uh, Definitive Edition is on all the other stuff, guys. It's your last chance. Go get it. It's freaking amazing. Okay, Matt, what what's you got, man? You love Dragon Quest so much that you called it Dragon Age. Good job, Oh, babe. my God. No, oh, I did. And I realized <laughs> that just as you were about to roast me. Damn it. Ah. Oh. Oh, man. sorry. I had a conversation about Dragon Age earlier with uh, a player person at work, and mm-hmm. it screwed me up. It screwed me up. I ruined it. I will say I'm interested in Immortals: Phoenix Rising as well, but I'm confused by the two different sides of the reviews. People, I love it, and then there are people just saying I hate every single thing about it. But I would like it if it was a totally different game. 
well, what do you What's what do you that doing? mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to watching more actual gameplay of it, maybe watching some reviews to see what people say, because I, I read two reviews, and like I said, both of them were t- on two different ends of the spectrum. I don't know, but I'm interested in that. And speaking of a game that's been getting two totally different reviews of that I think is awesome, that doesn't take itself too seriously, I'm talking about Star Renegades today, developed by Massive Damage, published by Raw Fury. I'm not sure what entirely this is all out on. I know it's out for PC, Xbox, because it's on Game Pass, like I said. I think it dropped for Switch on like the 19th, so a couple days after our last proper episode. Not sure if it's out on PS4 or PS5 yet. There's so many things I want to say in this game. It's a dimension-hopping, roguelite, strategy RPG with beautiful pixel art, awesome sound, awesome music. It's a game that's set in the future after some alien race has invaded like the star system. You play as one of the last band of resistance, but you also play as like this robot that's being sent through dimensions, like a scientist whose dimension has been overrun by these dimension hopping villains sends this robot across into like the parallel dimension or the parallel universe. And the robot meets up with the renegades of this dimension to try and guide them through to defeat this evil alien race that's come about. So basically, that's the that's the hook of the game. You're the rebels trying to fight off this giant alien menace. And the, the meat of the game is you're going from planet to planet, kind of defeating those forces along the way. As you land on the planet, it's kind of set up almost like a board game. You get this one big map, and it's got little different segmented areas. And as the robot, you can unlock three of those areas per day. So you check and like, okay, there's an enemy grunt over here, but he's guarding a place where you can get some credits. There's an enemy grunt down here, but he's guarding a place where you can get a weapon. Now this other area, if you don't clear it today, it'll get locked off. And who knows what's over there? So you got to spend those three charges wisely each day, clear out enemies, build up your party, you know, get some weapons, get some credits, get some experience, and then keep those lockdown places open if you want to use them to get to the center. You do that each day, you fight your enemies, and I'll get back to the combat in a second because that's what is most exciting about this game for me. But then after each day, you camp, so your party... Your party members all, you know, gather around the fire, and each party member has a little card that can affect either themselves or, you know, the other members of your party. So, like, your rogue will have a, all your attacks cause bleeding for the next two combats. You can share that card with the other people in your party, and then your affection grows with them. You get little dialogues kind of back and forth, and then you go to the next day. In each planet, you have three days until this giant behemoth robot comes down and that's the big big boss so you go through that planet clearing out lieutenants clearing out commanders fighting that big boss you get another party member and then you move to the next planet three planets and then the enemy fleet right there so that's the basic setup of the game but what's awesome about it is the combat because each combat you go into it's turn-based rpg but what's unique about it is there's a timeline across the top for each turn And each attack or skill or ability you use puts you somewhere on that timeline. And all the enemies, same thing. So at the start of the turn, all the enemies will queue up their attacks, be placed on that timeline. And everything you do puts you somewhere on the timeline. But if you act before the enemies, you get a crit bonus on them, which gives you additional effects, additional damage. You can apply bleeding or whatever your ability lets you do. But in addition to that, when you attack them, you can affect their position on that timeline. You can push their turns back. Some attacks actually push them forward, so it's kind of risk-reward there. But if you push them all the way off that timeline, kind of overkill them off the timeline, it'll break them, and then they don't take any actions that turn. So it's this beautiful mix of getting your stuff in, manipulating the enemies to knock them back further so you can hit them with an even heavier attack to knock them either off the timeline or kill them outright. Once you've broken an enemy off the timeline a couple times, then you can't do that anymore. They have to act before you can do that to them again. So it's, okay, well, I can't move this guy who's going to hit this 
big mega attack. So I'm going to use my guy who's got a stun, which you can only use once per combat, to stun him there so that next time, do, 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 it's all this beautiful just manipulation of yourselves and the enemies moving back and forth and knocking them, knocking everybody all around. It's fantastic. That reminds me of Grandia 2, I think it was, for the Dreamcast. Yeah, they had a similar system where you could use... It showed you who was coming up and whatnot, and you could use yep. your skills to knock them back and keep them under control. And sometimes some of the bosses had ones you couldn't stop, and you only had mm-hmm. a certain amount of time to get to it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I love that system. That's a good stuff right there. Yeah. So so that's the the just minute-to-minute combat is that. And it's just oh, – I, I love the combat so much that even the roguelite aspect of it, which I do love, doesn't bother me at all because each run you do, you know, you're slowly building up your characters – and you're fighting steadily stronger and stronger bosses on each planet. But if you do die, it's not game over necessarily. It's just game over for that parallel universe because the robot jumps across the timelines to another universe that the aliens are invading. But he stops at the hub area where you can use your enemy intel to unlock new characters. You can use credits to unlock new weapons, which you'll find in the crates, you know, each run through. You can power up your characters you're steadily building yourself up and up and up. The two different sides of the reviews that I've seen are people saying, it's so hard to even get to the second planet. I had to die 10 different times until, until I was strong enough. Uh, I, did it, I did it on my very first run. I got to the boss of the second planet on my first run. And then you have other people who are saying, well, the roguelite aspects aren't that aren't that brutal. You can steadily build up your people. You're unlocking new characters with new abilities all the time after each run. So if you like roguelite stuff, if that combat system sounds interesting to you at all, you definitely should check it out. If you've got Game Pass, you can play it for free. You definitely should check it out. I'm absolutely loving it. It's just, it's that right amount of strategy and fiddling around and roguelite. So there's lots of risk. If you don't plan your next moves, you can get totally destroyed. If your characters go down in battle, they can get resurrected with permanent flaws because you took a hit here and blah, 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 blah. It's everything up my alley. Even like the chunky pixel art, it's beautiful. The animations are great. Ah, everything is great in this game. I'm loving it so much. I can't wait to dive into it. I've only made two full runs through, but I can't wait to play more Star Renegades. You all should play it as well on anything that it's out for. Just play it. And I'm going to te- ask you a question, Matt. Before you get to your favorite little bit in our show, you said all these games. You had all these fun times, these fun moments. Mm-hmm. And I'm, 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 I'm about to lose my mind. I'm about to lose it. Okay. Are you telling me you did not purchase Turnteen Sentinel's Aegis Rim when it was freaking 30% off and you had your chance at that bad boy? I didn't. Come on. Well, see, I didn't because I knew there was a 50% off sale coming up, but that was also only in stores and I didn't go out. So that was also when I was in the heat, in the throes, in the depths, in the, in the swamp, in the morass of all these, all these Game Pass games. And I knew if I started that, then why did I buy Game Pass if I'm not going to play Game Pass games? Game Pass is always there. 13 Sentinels needs to be played. All right. <laughs> How, hey, has, how, hey, hey, has, how many runs you've done in Hades, dude? How many runs you've done uh, in Hades? Two. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that's what you said like three weeks ago. Yeah, four well, weeks ago. you know what? I'll get to it someday. You well, didn't tell I'll get me to 13 Sentinels someday. Hades. And first off, even if you did tell me I had to play Hades, I at least bought it. So I got it and have played two runs. You have not even bought the game I told you you have to play. So I'm way ahead of you on the spectrum here. Don't be trying to turn this around on me. Well, but if I don't buy it, then it just gets cheaper and cheaper. It's just, it's, it's, there you go. Boom. But you know what, Eric? I'm going to cheer you up because it's the best time of the show. It's everybody's favorite time of the show. So cheer up, slap slap yourself on the head and cheer yourself back up I'm because we got Ship Codes of Golden head. Keys <laughs> in Borderlands, the pre-sequel, one of our favorite Borderlands games. You know it, I know it. You love it, I love it. It's the pre-sequel, man. We got to get back in there. We got to play as Wilhelm. We got to play as freaking <laughs> Athena. Athena. You got to do it. You know what? Someday we're going to get there, but it won't be today. It ain't going to be tomorrow. It ain't going to be anytime <laughs> soon because, as we're going to talk about later, some other occurrences have come about, which you already know because Matt told you earlier, but that's for later in the show. All right? I will tell you about a little old gem called Godfall, which we'll talk about some more later. 
But for the moment, I want to let you know that while we were on Turkey Day, Godfall came out with update 2.1.17 with its patch notes, and it fixed all sorts of crap. All right, you know the rigmarole. We're not going to go through it. We're not going to tell you mm. everything it did. Uh-uh. But I will say it solved a whole bunch of bugs where you're clipping through stuff, having issues, can't you do this. Some bosses weren't dropping loot that they were supposed to be dropping, you know, on the amount-wise, etc. They fixed a lot of that. Tons and tons and tons of cool little issues, which they said it, and I'll say it too, really good on them because it was a holiday. They had just launched the game, mm-hmm. and they still put out a cool patch to fix a lot of stuff right then and there, right on, right out of the gate. That's impressive. That's good on them. I hope they continue to do that, and we'll talk a little bit more about our first impressions and things going on with Godfall a little bit later. But I just wanted to make everybody aware that they have put out some patch notes in case you missed it while we were on vacation eating that turkeys. Yeah, absolutely. There's too much in there to even think about listing and not a lot of stuff that I ever ran into. But like you said, good on them. They got on that patch quick. They're fixing tons of bugs. And then especially they had little icons in all those patch notes. And at the bottom it said, hey, these are bugs that were reported by the community. So not only are they fixing stuff, but they're going, oh, is that a problem? Let me research. Let me fix. So props to you, everybody at Counterplay Games. Keeping Godfall good, keeping it rolling. And speaking of good and rolling, if you want to see some people rolling through bunkers and badasses, check out IGN and Gearbox playing it for the first time ever live, doing it on the internet on Monday sometime. Breaking news right before yeah, we got that, on the show. <laughs> I saw that. I was like, okay, well, that's cool. Uh, when? What, what, yeah. what, what's going on with this? Uh, I don't understand. Okay. I'll just uh, wait till tomorrow to get to get another note that tells me when. You know, I, I bet I know what it is. I bet as soon as it got announced, they were like, hey, IGN people, come on down. Come on down. We're playing it right now. Let's record it. It's going to be like the Borderlands show. There's going to be cuts and zooms and, and mm-hmm. camera pans because it's going to be pre-recorded. And then, pre-recorded you know, somebody's – it's going to do like a giant fill on somebody's face. They're going to be like, oh, I really love that. It's going to be poor Mitsu all over again. <laughs> they perfected the gameplay loop. <laughs> Is this a meme? I don't, I don't understand what's happening right now. <laughs> well, they don't all, come on. In their defense, they've always done that. That was, that was last episode. It was really weird. I don't know what was going on. You know, COVID. You know, we can blame everything on COVID. That's what I do. The I editors got the COVID, COVID madness. The, wow. They got the COVID. Yeah, they, that's part of the symptoms. It's one of the 47 symptoms is COVID madness. And you just start <laughs> losing your mind. <laughs> and you do random close-ups on people. It's it's crazy. It's wonkers. That's why they sent you home for 14 days. And so you don't get a close-up into people's face. You know what I mean? I was just going to say, it's like it's it's like that that uh, that little zombie uh, fungus that infects the ants and makes them do whatever they want. It's mm-hmm. the extreme close up to COVID to perpetuate itself makes you get up get in somebody's up face and yeah. then give the COVID to them. See, mm-hmm. we figured it out. We don't science, need vaccines man. because we're just using science to figure this out for ourselves. That's right. <laughs> Damn, we're good, Matt. Sometimes I'm impressed. You know, five minutes with us. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I'm impressed by my good buddy Eric because he got me not only a Series S, but he secured Man. me and himself and like 15 other people. He was like Santa Claus rolling I know, down I was the street. Like Santa this year. <laughs> big old, big old sack full of PS5s. Like, oh, hello, little Timmy crying in the gutter. Have oh, yourself a PS5. Go? Have a PS5. PS5 for everybody. Oh, Have oh, an Xbox. Oh. Have an Xbox. Here's a PS5 exactly. for you. Merry Christmas and to all a good night. You know, I'm at, I'm honestly stressed out about this though, man. I gotta tell you because I've got terrible luck. Everything that goes wrong in my life, it's it's all the time, constant. Uh-huh. And for me to have used all this good luck on you, myself, and others, mm-hmm. I feel like I'm in a bad, very bad spot right now. I feel like I'm gonna have a near death situation coming up very soon. I I'm in that same boat because I. I'm always the same thing. If something really good happens, something really bad happens right after it. So as I was sitting here setting up the PS5, I was like, oh, so cool, playing games. Like, wow, this is the best. And I looked around my house, and I was like, somebody's going to break in here and steal all of my nice things tomorrow. Mm-hmm. And I was at work that whole day, and I was like, oh, my God. I don't, I don't have any way of knowing if it's going to happen. Should I go home at lunch 
because something bad's going to happen. It's, it's, or the house is going to burn down something. Got home that day. I was like, okay, house is still here. Run to the entertainment center, open the little door, like, like, like a kid in a horror movie. Just, <laughs> oh my God, it. it's still there. <sighs> oh, yeah. I mean, I was able to secure three PlayStation 5s and a couple Xboxes. All right. <laughs> and I see people everywhere going, they can't get one. And I'm like, mm-hmm. I don't know what happened. All right, because let me tell you, folks, I got no inside connections. Trust me on yeah. that. I got nothing. I was out there just like everybody else, pushing them buttons, re- refreshing, doing all the ad carts, and I just, I don't know. It just it kept clicking. It kept clicking. I kept getting lucky. I kept getting that right moment at the right time. But I feel, I feel like I'm doomed. I feel like I, I expended way too much luck, and now I've, I've got, I've got a reckoning coming, and I don't like it. I'm waiting for that shoe to drop, and it's going to drop soon. I feel like it's not going to be good for me. So you might hear me in a few days next week tell you all about what happened. It's going to be the first icy like icy morning. We're going to drive in. We're both going to go flying off the road and die. That's what it's mm-hmm. going to be. Because I thought about it when like the first snow that got it slick around here, mom texted me. She was like, oh, the giant accidents and all the usual accident places. And yeah. I was like, this is, this is going to be it. I got the new iPad, got both new systems. I'm feeling happy and fresh. Got all the hot new games and stuff. Life is great. Anytime I'm here at the house, I'm gonna. There's something gonna happen that I'm gonna die or be hospitalized and can't be with all my stuff, or it's all gonna get stolen. It's bound to happen. It is. So we just kind of wanted to go over this with all of you, the listeners. So when we're dead next week and gone, and the show <laughs> never shows up again, you understand what happened. We didn't abandon the show. No, We're no, it would dead. never happen. Yeah. And you just would never know because obviously you don't really know who we or where we are per se. So uh-huh. just let you know we're dead. And this is us talking to you one last time. So don't rob my house because my wife and kids are still living in it, but I'm dead. <laughs> Thank you. Don't rob my it. house because you don't deserve my stuff. I bought that stuff for me. Just burn the house down. <laughs> just, and, and everybody that lives in the second half of it. That'll, shh, there's nobody over there. Oh, it's there's totally nobody. abandoned. It's empty. Yeah, just burn the house down. That seems really weird. We probably shouldn't say things like that. Anywho, <laughs> the reason why we brought all this up in the first place was <laughs> was to discuss. We both ended up with PlayStation 5s. I didn't think it was going to happen. Matt didn't think it was going to happen. But here we are. We did it. We got them. We've played on them. What do you think, Matt? Just kind of an overall, anything that's amazing, anything that's really kind of irritating you, General thoughts on the PlayStation 5 and how to navigate it and play it. I will say, I think the one, only thing that is a little bit irritating is just the navigation of the system itself because it's different from PS4, it's different from PS3, it's not the nice, I mean, it is still a crossbar kind of, but the long presses on the PlayStation button do different things than they did before. Why does it have to be different? Why do I have to long press to go home instead of short press to go home? And then when you're on that, you have to short press to get the menu to get yourself to power off. I don't like that, but that's a total minor annoyance. Things I'm loving so far is that controller. I heard people talking about, oh, the controller's so great, the adaptive triggers and the stuff is so cool, it's so awesome. And it is awesome. The controller itself, it feels cool, it looks cool. I will say the one thing that hasn't super impressed me is the, the what is it they call it, like the smart rumble or the haptics. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's cool, but I felt the HD rumble on the Switch, which is just as impressive to me so far. But what is killing me is those adaptive triggers. When I first booted up freaking Astro's Playroom, and you know, you do the, oh, wiggle your controller back and forth. Mm-hmm. Feel the little dudes rumbling around inside of it. Cool. And then it goes, oh, yeah, press down on the trigger to kind of boost the little rocket boost. And I pushed down on the trigger, and it was hard. It was stiff as hell. And I went, what's going on here? I thought I had it pushed down all the way, and it wasn't reacting. And I, boom, you click down, and it goes, Poof. and I was like, holy crap, that's that's amazing. To actually feel the resistance as you're, like, stringing the bow in Astro's Playroom, too. You can feel that resistance, too. Mm-hmm. I don't, I don't want to say it's a game changer because I said game changer a million times before when I was talking about the Xbox, but it's something totally unique that hasn't been here before, and it feels amazing when it's used in a game. It feels fantastic. 
I'm going to tell you right now, it is a game changer. And I know that sounds corny, but I don't care because Astro proves to you all sorts of really cool things that that can do for you. Like the rain pattering down, having a different sensation. You mm-hmm. walking across sand, having a different sensation. You coming up on these huge wind turbines, having a different sensation. Yeah. Like you said, when you're throwing back the uh, bow, shooting that off, when you're hang gliding, all these things you feel. And when you see it and then you feel it, it kind of like boom, boom, two and two together it makes one. It's beautiful. It feels right. And instantly, I think we talked about it before, but I'll say it again after having us both tried this out. When a game comes out, like a Silent Hill game, which I oh, suspect yeah, yeah. is going to get announced here pretty soon. Imagine this. Imagine you're in a room and, you know, something weird and funky's happening and you feel like the pyramid head in the other room and, you're, and there's like this mild vibration in the floor that you feel in your controller. Imagine the fear added to just knowing and hearing and then now feeling them thumps and the scrapes of his blade or something. You know what I mean? I'm totally feeling you. How about this? You have to hold the door closed or like push down on a lid of a box oh, or something. And then it's pushing out on you. Yeah, you, you you crank those triggers down, but then you steadily feel it pushing back and pushing back and pushing back. Or you're trying to contain it and you're just forcing it down. Oh, my God, that's going to be ridiculous. Yes. There are so many applications that this controller can be used for. And all the podcasts have talked about it, and I do want to briefly mention it. I do fear that it will not get utilized the way it should be. Yeah. by all the different uh, third-party support because that's just the way it always ends up going. There's all these different features and functions, but the third parties just generally go, nah, we're just going to make a game where we just use the buttons and keep rolling. I hope, and I, I have my little old hands in the prayer formation, that it does not come to that and that they actually use it the way it should be used, like Astros, and even take it beyond Astros because Astros is just an early you know, conception or whatever of what mm-hmm. it can do and what it could be. You could take it further, and I'm sure it has the capability to go further. I hope somebody does it. And and I feel like at least with at least with Sony, you have a a better chance of first party you know titles using this stuff because there's a lot of Sony first party stuff. Whereas, like I said, with the Switch with the HD Rumble, you're generally going to be looking at only Nintendo titles doing that, and those come out once in a total blue moon. Now, I mean, sure, the big, big Sony stuff still comes out once in a blue moon, but you get a lot more franchises in that pile, I feel like. So I'm hopeful, and I it's just, I, like you said, I'm mildly terrified, but at the same time, it is so amazing. How could people not, how could you not do it? Once you know you have this tool available to immerse people in the games like 10 times more than they normally are, as a developer, how can you not want to just use that all the time? So the best thing for me, as I kind of mentioned before, was that controller, just like you said. It's fantastic. It feels comfortable. It feels great. The buttons feel like in all the perfect locations. It feels like the perfect spread for me to rest my fingers, the haptic feedback, all that good stuff. Everything seems to be there. Now, I have to also agree with you in the sense that I, I don't understand why they decided to, like, backwards everything. Mm-hmm. I don't know why they did that, to put everything instead of on the top, on the bottom, to make the long hold something else, to make the quick hold something else. And then on top of it all, I'm not happy about themes going away. Yeah. I don't like it. I'm very upset about it. I loved having my themes. I loved having – it was always a thing for me. to Whatever my game was, whatever my GM was for that moment, I'd, ha- I'd turn the theme to that. So every time I booted my PlayStation, it kind of instantly propelled me to that game I said mm-hmm. oh yeah you're hearing that music or you're seeing that image or whatever it was you know y- you want to play that game that's what you need to do because as we've discussed on the show a lot of i i get unmotivated i get to points where i kind of don't want to do anything i just sit there and stare at a screen and i don't know what i should do the themes always helped me because it was just like hey remember this is the game you love this is the one you're focused on this is what you said is your jam don't betray yourself get in that game if you're not going to do anything else and now you just get random crap. I log in and, oh, Fortnite's got Galactose. Why do I care about what's happening in Fortnite right now? Oh, and then it was like Warzone the other day. And I'm like, I don't care. I don't care what's happening in Warzone. What's this random crap? Then, of course, you can scroll over to the games. And then each one has its own, like, set screen. 
I don't know. That means you have to wantingly scroll over to said game. That's the part that I really don't like. I'm I'm in the same boat with you. I love the themes. I loved when this is the game that I'm playing, that's the theme that I'm putting on. Or just this is the theme that I love. It's got great music. It's got cool animations. I'm putting that on for the next few months or however long it is until I want to change it. So I miss those. But what I also don't like right now is, like you said, you scroll over to the game and each game has its own music going on, which was the same on PS4 once you went down into the details of the game. Mm -hmm. What I don't like is now I'm going across them here. Mm -hmm. I I, I don't like it, especially because Division 2, which I installed, it starts with boom, boom. Every time you scroll past it, boom. No, stop it. Don't. I don't. I don't like it's. It's, it's a disruptive. It's a, it's a it first world weird. problem. It's a minor annoyance, but I don't I like it. I think it's a real issue. I because for example, I used to play uh, Final Fantasy fourteen, not fourteen, fifteen. Final Fantasy fifteen was my jam. All right, for quite a long time, didn't talk about it much. We talked about it before, but the theme was on my PlayStation for a very long time. It's a beautiful theme. It scrolls across. It plays one of the theme songs in the game. It's beautiful. It's wonderful. It's extremely relaxing. And, of course, no matter where you went, that's what played. And I loved it. And now you're exactly right. Every time you scroll, it's like, I'm like, I don't know. I just don't, I don't feel comfortable on the main screen anymore. I don't feel comfortable there. I'm just like, I just hurry up, pick what I want to play, and get 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 going. I, I can't sit here. And then on top of that, they've got the those little whatever you've been playing recently. You can like take those clips and you can like click on them, and it'll instantly take you to where you were in that game oh, at that okay. point in time. And I'm sure this is cool. And I'm sure this is the old man meme, but I'm like, I don't care. I don't. I don't. I'm just gonna go load into the game like I would normally do as a normal human being and just uh-huh. start playing. I don't want to like click your little button and go exactly to this save point or that spot in the game or that mission or whatever it was. What I don't trust it, you know what I mean? And that's I know that's the old man me. I'm just like I don't know <laughs> what you're doing. You, yeah. I don't know what you're doing over here. I I'll just want to click my <laughs> game and load in like a normal human does. We'll get going from there. So those are kind of weird and funky to me right now. So I, I just feel like I feel like the menu is kind of a mess for me. Like mm. I'm like I don't know what all this stuff is. It's all weird, and I know I'll figure it out. Yeah. But I will say this: another thing I'll figure out is the menus. Like in your settings and stuff, there's a ton of options. Mm-hmm. And this I appreciate. I don't appreciate it at the moment just because I don't understand it all and I'm trying to refigure it out. And I've been seven years with the PlayStation 4, so it's kind of like, oh, I'm so used to this and this. And I knew exactly where to go to turn HDCP off or on. And I knew where oh, to yeah, go yeah. to get my brother's account logged into mine or this. All that stuff's completely changed up. Different spots, different levels of interaction, all sorts of extra options which I know I'm going to love in the long run because there's a ton of extra options. But in the short run, it is a lot. It's a lot of you, know, you like having to go through doing the boring settings thing where you go through every single one, looking at what it does, figuring it out, seeing what works, what doesn't. And I'm like, oh, my goodness, man. Uh, it's almost overwhelming. And I'm like, I just want to turn this off, go play World of Warcraft because it's the same as it always has been. I don't, I don't know about playing this PlayStation 5 thing. It's scary. No, I haven't gotten into that on the PS5, but I did go through that on the Series S when I was setting it up. I'm like, oh, what's this option? And then it opens up a tier of like seven more things. Oh, well, I just wanted to like see if I could change the theme color, and it was just like boop, 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 all this stuff. Oh, this whole other menu that takes you to a whole other interface. I don't even know what the hell is going on, so I'm not digging into my PS5 settings at all. I don't care. One thing, <laughs> since you were talking about like the little cards and clips – one thing that I did just notice today after I was playing Miles Morales and kind of sitting around stewing, trying to figure out what to do, I've noticed and I appreciate, you know, when you get a trophy or something, it captures action on either side of when you get that trophy. So when you're going through your trophy list, you're not going to see a bunch of black screens like it always was. Not always, but pretty much always was on the PS4. Like, oh, it's in the middle of a cutscene. Bloop, trophy, black screen. Well, I can't share that to Twitter because who cares about a black screen? That's stupid. Now you can at least, you know, get some action on the front or back, figure out what screenshot you want to actually put up. I like that. I think that's cool. And it'll it'll be more fun for me, especially with something like Miles Morales, where you're swapping out the suits back and forth. Oh, what's this trophy? Oh, that's back when I was wearing the yellow and black suit. Oh, that was so much fun to play with. 
So I like that. A little tiny thing, but I appreciate it. So I haven't dabbled in any of that yet, so look forward to doing that because I do agree with you. So many trophies have popped where it's just a black screen or some like mm-hmm. really stupid screen that makes no sense. And I'm just like, well, that's a wasted trophy picture. Oh, and I'm sad. Allowing the customization, et cetera, that'll be really cool going forward. And beyond that, for myself, uh, you know, honestly, with the PS5, it's it's been nice. I hope the themes get reincorporated. Settings are cool. Those adventure things, I don't know about. The backwards stuff, though, I, I don't think I'm ever, I honestly don't think I'll ever get used to the way they redid the button where you know, the quick the quick hold and the, the long mm-hmm. hold and then the down and then up that really does bug me and then the new party system just really bugs me because now it'll have like all your saved parties but you won't know who's in them they'll just say hey here's like the four parties you've been in the most recently or whatever yeah. then you got to go in and like see all friends or see all parties and then it'll tell you who's in them and then you can go join them or you can create a new group, but then it's going to add another party. I'm not sure. I still don't know if I really like that whole party system. Maybe it'll grow on me once I get used to it and rocking and rolling. But right now it does kind of mildly aggravate me because it's like a wasted step. Now I got to go in and go, oh, mm. should I play Destiny? Because I play Destiny only if friends and peeps are on. So it's like, okay, well, I got to go check and see if they're on. Well, I can't see if they're in the party. On the main one, I got to click on the extra button to go see if they're in a party together. Oh, nobody's there. Nobody's hanging out. Okay, never mind. I'll go do something else. I haven't run into that yet because I play with one party of people, so it's going to be perfect for me. Oh, the one party, the one dude I play with. Here we go. That's cool. One thing One thing I do want to mention, the last thing, though, is I, was, <laughs> I cleared out my entertainment center because I had PS3, PS2, PS4, all kinds of stuff in that, and I put in my giant, enormous PS5. And I booted it up, you know, I put it in the cables, and I booted it up, and it went on the TV, and it went, all right, plug in the controller to continue, and, you know, assign the controller to your console. And I looked at the controller, and I went, I don't have a USB-C cable. I don't have one. I have lightning cables, and I have micro USB cables. Uh, do I have to, like, put clothes back on and go to a store just to buy a stupid USB-C cable? But thank God for Nintendo who somehow sent two different USB-C cables with the Switch, because the default one is that. And then I found one randomly, and it's all Nintendo branded. So thank you, Nintendo, for letting me play my PlayStation 5. I, I It tickled me. I laughed and I giggled like a little old schoolboy, because I plugged into my PS5 with a cable that says Nintendo on it, and I plugged in the other end with a cable that says Nintendo on it. And I went, Nintendo's the best. Thank you, Nintendo, for letting me play. Now, it should have came with one, though, I thought. I'm pretty mm. sure it had one, no? Mm-mm. It huh. has no cable in the box. Really? Yeah. That's crazy. I could have sworn mine had a cable in it. Maybe someone stole your cable. My, That's like, what they took. Out of all the things they could have stole that, they opened it up and stole that cable. It's possible. <laughs> I mean, my my Xbox didn't come with a cable. PS5 didn't come with a cable. Thank you, That's Nintendo. Weird. Thank you, Nintendo. You did it. I appreciate that. And of course, (laughs) another thing I appreciate is some Godfall. All right. You know, I'm still early impressions on it. And that's the last thing we're talking about today. Since we both got our PlayStation 5s, we've both been able to play. Now, I will state, I have not been playing on a PlayStation 5. I played on PC. Matt Mm -hmm. has played on PlayStation 5. I didn't think I was going to get one, so I got it on PC. Here we go. We're playing it. Early impressions on this one. For me, I, I told you, but I was kind of like, well, I don't know. It's good. It's fun. I enjoy this game. Mm-hmm. But something about it, you know, something was about it. Something just wasn't like clicking, clicking. And I got it, Matt. All right. So Godfall, as you said, has you in the realms. You go to Earth realm, water realm, et cetera, et cetera, on up and going. But whenever you do a mission, it dumps you into the same environment mm-hmm. that you were in in the previous mission. It yeah. just takes you maybe in a different direction or whatever, a different baddie you're supposed to kill, a different group of enemies, et cetera, et cetera. And that was kind of, like you said, kind of wear, like not wearing on me, but kind of like, oh, I don't know what, I don't know, this is kind of weird. I mean, it just seems like I'm doing the same thing almost. But I'm getting new loot and cool loot. So I started to play it as like a, as a micro game. 
So I'll pop it in. I'll play it for like a half hour, hour tops. I log off. I go play World of Warcraft. I go play whatever it is. And now I'm having a great time Mm -hmm. because I go on and I go do a mission. I go do a hunt and I, and then I pop on off. And if you guys don't know, when you're in each realm, they'll have like different hunt missions for you, different main missions for you, different side missions. Once you complete the main missions, there'll be like different boss hunts. You can go repeat to get more items to upgrade your gear in the forge and uh, to then uh, obviously get new valor suits, et cetera, et cetera, so on and so forth. Basically, just build your character up and all the while level up to be better, stronger, faster, all that good stuff, which I will say the skill sets are fantastic. We'll talk about that in a minute. But all in all, as a big general piece of pie so far, I'm finding that it's fun to play in small chunks and not as fun to play in like huge hour long sessions because when you get to a realm, you're in that realm for a while and you got to do the same area over and over and over again, just doing different things. Yeah, I'm 100% in the same boat. I, I loved exploring in the Sanctum as you're raiding it, going the different paths and finding the little treasure chests. I was like, oh, yeah, they're doing it. They're doing the little side side action stuff, and I love it. And the other thing I loved at that point was when you run, the more you run, the faster you go. I was like, this is perfect for someone who loves to explore like me. But then I got to into the Earth Realm doing that first mission, and I saw a little side path over here, and I ran down it. And there was a treasure chest. Okay. Ran down this other side path, treasure chest. Ran down the third side path, and then there were 16 other paths off of there because I reached the middle of the Earth Realm. And so I ran all through, every single one of them, ran all over the place. I was like, oh, I'm going to find so much stuff. And you find, you know, little resources, you know, a couple chests to open, but there's also nothing there. And I was like, as someone who loves to explore, there's no reason to. Right. Well, at least right now, so far in just the Earth Realm, because I've, I've, I'm only up to the part where I just unlocked the Forge. Like, I'm not very far into it at all, so initial impressions only. Maybe it fills up somewhere along the line, like way down the line. But I'm with you. It's going to be a game where I play a mission or two, only do the mission, and then get off and play something else. Because... My brain just doesn't work of just go in and just run to the objective and just clear the objective and get back out. In a beautiful game like this, I want to run all around. I want to find secrets. You don't really find secrets. You just find more resources and maybe a little clump of three enemies like halfway through and then nothing. Nothing. There's nothing out there. Their environments are they're big and the area is large. But like you said, it's just resources and a couple treasure chests you'll find and a leap patty here and there. That kind of thing. So if you like to just roam around, you'll be rewarded with resources, which will help you get more valor plates, upgrade your gear, that kind of stuff. Right. So there's not, there's no reason not to do it. But like you said, if you if you're trying to find like a nook and cranny, and you're trying to find like an ultra rare, this or that, so far that's not the case. Mm -hmm. Uh, You're better off, honestly, in my opinion. Just going to the objective, taking care of it, hopping back out, doing a hunt or, you know, killing that boss again right. for the resources they provide you because they also have the chances to drop really good loot of a certain level. And the point where I'm at is even that you can't do for very long because I did it a few times where I was just repeating some hunts, repeating some kills. But I I started dropping stuff that was like level 9 and 10 and I'm like level 15. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, well you know, that's, this ain't even worth doing. So it gets to the point where you can't even do that in that area. You have, you need to move on. And so of course I moved on. I went to the water realm, started thing and it's fun and it's cool. The combat's really nice. The button mapping is crazy. I don't know yeah. what kind of aliens these people are at counterplay. I don't know if they got like eight fingers and seven eyes or whatever it is they're playing with, but like they're mapping for the buttons to me is just weird and super strange and Mm -hmm. it's extremely hard to play like normally because it just seems counterintuitive to whatever i would do naturally and especially for me because i'm bouncing between primarily between godfall and miles morales which has a normal button mapping scheme now it's totally totally two different games but you have strong attacks light attacks in places where they normally are on the controller in Spider-Man. And here now they're on the triggers and the same two triggers. And it just, it throws me off every single time. And it just doesn't, 
it takes me a while to get into the game, so I want to spend more time running around to try and get used to playing it again, but there's no real point in running around and doing that. It, yeah, it throws me off every single time, plus the, I think for me, and this this is all nitpick, and these are all early impressions, obviously, I'm not bashing the game, but the the interface for interacting with things with the circle button is like way off for me. The circle button doesn't show up enough. Like it's usually just white, but there's so much bloom and lighting effects and bright things in this game that I'll be standing right in front of like when he, when the forge master dude goes, Hey, use this to upgrade the forge. And then the camera pulls back and I go, where is that? What is that? And I looked to the right and I looked to the left and I went, what? And even though my camera went over the forge itself, the little icon to interact with it, the big icon was still hidden in just like the glow of everything. It just, that throws me off every time. I'm used to seeing like a boom, like a stark, dark vision of the button that I'm supposed to press. And it's kind of like, it's either down too far or it's too light. It's just, I don't know, it throws me off every time. I'm still having fun, like you said, with the combat, you know, when I can get some strategic combat going, I'm loving it. But getting into it is hard because you have to remap your brain to the buttons. And then the interface sometimes just doesn't, doesn't work for me for some reason. I don't know what it is. I agree with that. The, uh, the buttons on there are a little wonky every now and again with like clicking on the, uh, Oh, for B or B for me or whatever, you know, the interact mm-hmm. button. But, uh, I, I do got to say, I do appreciate the combat. I think that's really cool. I think switching between your two, you know, your two weapons that you've put on there is a lot mm-hmm. of fun and getting those put together and then taking your shield and throwing it out like Captain America, yeah. you know, the skill sets, which is what I was going to get back to, allow you to kind of vary things up and, and, and go mm-hmm. where you want to go. It's really cool because you get these different skill sets. You can start at any four points of the map you want to and then build in. And then you get, if you really want to hyper-focus, each skill has like four or five different sets that you can mm-hmm. put into it so you can go ultra hard into that thing. So you can kind of be a jack of all trades, master of none, or you can get four or five and just kind of max them out and just be really good at that one set of things. I find, though, that I kind of, like, as I'm going, I see more and more that I want. Because there's Mm -hmm. a whole bunch of extra combo moves you can get if you're up in, like, the top left corner. But then the bottom left has, like, the shield stuff. And I'm finding that the shield stuff's actually really good and really Mm -hmm. cool and useful. And then, of course, you got your general stats over here on the right. And now I'm like, oh, my God, I want that. I want that. I want that. So I'm, like, trying to, like, build my skill tree out like a weird spider web where I'm Mm -hmm. trying to maximize the pieces I like and trying to strategically go through to get all the really cool stuff and get all, of course, the Archon stuff, though. And I got to say, it's kind of confusing to me. And it's probably more because my buttons are wonky and the button control schemes are wonky. When Archon comes up, I feel like I'm like slamming the button to hit it and activate it and it's not working and I don't know what's going on. Hmm. So I'm like, once again, I think just, I really do think, I hope Counterplay listens. Let it allow us to remap the controller. Yeah. Just let me remap the controller and put the stuff where I want it to be. And that's going to solve probably 75, 80% of my issues when I'm playing the game. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to have a lot more fun with it because I think it's a beautiful game. It has really cool loot. The skill tree is fun. It's neat. You can kind of upgrade wherever you want to. The, the overall open system of going into the world is kind of not great. It gets a little repetitive, but I can look past that. As long as I keep moving forward and understand that I should only do like the hunts and the main missions once and then move on, mm-hmm. I can deal with that. And especially if, like I told you earlier, I'm playing at smaller increments, that's not gonna, that's going to be a non issue. But right now, man, just the controls for me are killing me. It's bugging me. It's not, it's just not second nature. So I'm, I'm having to actively think about everything I do all the time. Meanwhile, the baddies are coming in, they, they'll hit you hard. Mm-hmm. So if you're not paying attention, you're not in there smoking them, locking onto your targets, strafing, parrying, etc., you'll get you'll get taken out pretty quick or just have to use your gems up, which is a waste, and you don't want to mm-hmm. do that if you don't have to. But you know what I'm saying. I think that controller just really needs to be remapped. And I think that's my issue with the skills because I was looking through, like, the siphon I was so excited about doing. We talked about it many, many weeks mm-hmm. ago now. I got to the siphon skill, and it was like, oh – Hold L2 and then press square to do it. And I'm like, I'm already Spider Hands McGee. I'm like Octopus Jones here. Mm-hmm. I can't do it. I won't be able to do it. S- some of the skills up in the upper 
upper left, I think. It was like, hold L2 and then L1 to do this. Hold L2 and then R1 to do this. And I with went, an X. I, I, I can barely just attack with both mm-hmm. the strengths of the attacks. And again, I'm sure it's 100% my fault. I'm sure there are a lot of people playing it and it just feels right to them. But it just it's throwing me away from things that I want to do just because I'm looking at it and I'm it's so hard to play. It's not hard to play, but for me, it's just it doesn't click. So I'm liking the skill tree because every time I do unlock a node, even if that siphon node is not the way I want to go now, there's always something interesting that I didn't see before that now I have access to that I'm excited about putting on my character. I started lower right, like I said, and I wanted to shoot over to, you know, vitality up just because live forever. That's what I do. But every time I just want to go to the left, there's something cool to the top or to the bottom. There's always Uh something cool. And I'm I'm diverting all over the place. It's ridiculous. (laughs) I ended up making my way all the way up to the top right where there's like a shield slam ability. Mm -hmm. And I went, oh yeah, I got to have that. So instead of going for the Archon Fury and the Vitality and everything else, I'm going all the way up now. And I'm like, Mm -hmm. this is fun. You know, I'm like, oh my God, that's so cool. I really want that. And I'm diverging out into paths and things I wasn't originally going to do mm-hmm. because of cool, cool, cool skills and things I really want. Yeah. That's awesome. And I got my first uh, legendary in the wild the other mm-hmm. day off of the boss getting into the water realm. So I was like, oh, yeah, here we go. Popped it on. It's super powerful. Looks gorgeous and really cool. So I'm like, I'm feeling it. I like this. And then, of course, in the forge, you can ups- upgrade it. So if you really mm-hmm. like it, you can keep it around a lot longer than it naturally would be because you can just use your uh, resources that you're gathering while you're doing the extra hunts, etc., to upgrade those pieces. So a lot of cool stuff going on here and a lot more to check out. But, of course, you know we actually got to play it with those wonky controls until they allow us to re- remap them. <laughs> yeah, so I, I we'll close it out on a good note there by saying there's a ton of stuff we like. All the skills, the skill tree. The game is gorgeous. It sounds good. It's fun to play once you're in that mindset. I'm still excited to do that, to start finding legendaries, to get back into playing Godfall the way we were talking about, you know, months ago. I just have to get in and just, just do it. Complete those missions, keep going, unlock more cool things, because there is a lot in here. We know that there's a lot in here, even if I don't have access to it right now. We've been talking about it for months, so I'm excited to get into it, because there there is so much good stuff here that I just, I just need to get to it. And they've promised more to come. They've already promised and said they've got uh, some stuff in the pipe coming down, so maybe allowing you to remaps one of them, but of course, even if it's not it is a fun game and good so far, but uh, like I said, just some just some minor stuff we got to tweak. And I think Counterplay, with having put out that patch that they did, I think we can count on them to do the right thing. So I got my hopes high that we're going to be smooth sailing, and pretty soon my, uh, my attack will be X and O where it should be. Thank you very much. So what are you guys thinking about Godfall, about your new PS5s, about coming and burning down our houses? What do you think about any of that stuff? Let us know via the email, thirdshiftme at gmail.com, on the Twitter machine at thirdshiftme, and find us on Facebook under Third Shift. Indeed, you can find us over there on that old Facebook. We're still kicking. We're still alive. You can also find us over on Patreon. You like what we're doing. You want to support us. You're like, oh, man, Third Shift, we really want to see you stick around. We don't want to see your houses burned down and you dead. Well, throwing a buck, two bucks, three bucks four bucks any kind of bucks our way would help us do just that we treat it like a little tip jar anything and all things is very much appreciated if you can't support us monetarily you can support us by giving us mailbag questions feedback in any way shape or form which we've gotten a couple here in the past few weeks and it's been super super awesome it's really boosted us make us feel like superman you know what i'm saying Mm -hmm. we love it i'm telling you i can't stress it enough we feed off that stuff all of all of the content creators out there, they they might lie to you, but they do. They feed off of it. It's the five star stories I've been telling you guys about all this time. It's just like that. It works just like that. All right. So consider doing any of those things because we truly appreciate it. And absolutely, you should consider listening to that very next episode, which is going to be out on the tenth of December. And you can find that episode on iTunes, on Stitcher, on Podbean, on Spotify, and on YouTube. As I always say, if you like what we're doing and you'd like to help us out, please give us a like, a rating, a review, a comment, a subscription. Any kind of good thing on any one of those good services, because it does help us out. I'm talking to you, microphone. It does help us out. 
and we really do appreciate it. And we appreciate the five star story. And with that, we went long in the tooth. It's time to end this episode and give the kids a bath. <laughs> so with that, there's nothing else to say, but don't forget to say. Sit down.